So it's been requested, it's been pondered, I've thought on it. Some of the thoughts I've had were, oh, I don't have enough space, or do you have enough space? Or would you even enjoy working with wood? Maybe you would enjoy working with wood. Ah, you know, now I gotta buy an airbrush, and how much money is this going to cost to start doing it? Will you suck at it? Maybe you'll be great at it. So I've thought about it, and um, a lot of you have asked if I would ever do it, so that's, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the boat of confidence there. But I decided, you know what, let's try it. Enough, enough thinking, enough telling people, uh, maybe we're just gonna try one. Today, we are putting the plastic aside to play with some wood. So I figure, hey, what would be my first wooden bait? What do I like throwing, hard bait wise, that could be turned into wood? I like square bills. This is a really cheap one. This is Academy brand, and it's wonderful. So we're gonna do a square bill for my first wooden bait. This is gonna be quite an, ex uh, quite an experience. I have zero, and I mean zero experience, even working with wood, much less trying to carve a wooden lure. Um, I've never used an airbrush, so we're gonna learn together. All right, well, in sort of a sad ceremonial thing here, I literally have to push the plastics aside for today's video. All right, so I have some basswood here, and um, just a nice little chunk. I think it's three inches, uh, three inches there, and an inch thick, something like that. So. I basically want to make a, a regular size square bill, but probably a little bit larger than that one right there. This is like your standard, uh, I believe this would be the 2.5 if it was a uh, Strike King. So it's almost an inch wide. So basically I'm just going to start by sketching the shape of the bait right onto the wood. And I'm not even going to use pencil, because hopefully I'm not going to mess it up. But yeah, really stupid of me, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay, wish me luck. We're just going to kind of start there on the edge and work our way up. Alrighty. Okay, so there's our basic shape and it actually turned out to be the exact size like almost exactly the size of the crankbait that i was holding so meant to make it a little bit larger but hey first time ever sketching a crankbait shape so we're gonna go with that Okay, there we go, everybody. So, eh, get this out. There it is, sort of a, uh, a real rough, uh, unsanded version of the cut. I'll, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to really buff this edge to where it's a fatter edge. That way I can um, install the hardware in it because it's a little too pointy, but we'll get there. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're now actually inside. And uh, you can see I've done a few things uh, since we left off. I uh, just kind of did a little rough sanding around around the bait um, and actually started carving a little bit. But just to kind of even out um, the, the shape a little bit. And um, so 
this is what we have and what I did is I went ahead and measured out on the top and just kind of drew with a with a pencil here just kind of what the overall top profile is going to be and uh, now I'm just kind of shaving that down I uh, this is such a small bait I'm not gonna like go saw these lines I'm just I'm not good enough with a saw yet but you know I can take uh, just just a little wood carving knife and this file and pretty much get what I want and then from there we can uh, chamfer the edges and and uh, and then do our kind of final sanding as it were so still a lot of work to do but having fun never done this before and uh, really really enjoying myself so basically what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just taking this wood carving knife and going about my business just kind of pushing it with my thumb trying hard not to cut myself so you know I'm basically just kind of going to cut away this uh, this down all the way down to this edge you can see I basically did it on that side a little bit a little bit more work to go you can see there and uh, and then obviously I'll chamfer the edges and then do a lot of sanding to kind of round the shape but for right now I just kind of want to get this top profile cut and uh, you know I'm sure guys that have real power tools and skills with saws could do this part in the blink of an eye but I'm gonna take my time I'm having fun enjoying doing something I've never done I've never carved wood um, you know I made it all the way through childhood somehow without doing any of this sort of thing you know, this bass wood is pretty easy to carve so far you know as long as you cut it out to where you can carve it with the grain you know you certainly can't carve very well that direction but you know that's why you pay attention I guess but uh, anyway we are gonna keep doing this until we kind of have a, uh, a a basic shape so to speak so we've got um, kind of one side of the bottom um, sort of carved out so I'm just gonna kind of smooth over that middle section here use a file for that because it it's still kind of bulging a little bit there in the center but you know we can uh, sand all that down and, and really smooth things out so that's um, obviously lots of sanding required and no belt sander to do it with but that's okay so I mean you know that was maybe four minutes of work so still a lot of still a lot of work to go but uh, we're at least starting to get some sort of a shape all right and uh, we're back so this is kind of what we have and um, I'm just going to sort of uh, chamfer these edges a little bit which is to say I'm just going to kind of cut the sharp corners off of them and then that will be sanded more round I mean, you can see this edge here you know, obviously this bait's going to be a lot more round than it is so I'm just going to take some of those edges off that's essentially all we're doing same with this edge chamfer it, chamfer it a little more there down here of course you can see we did it a little bit but we'll do it some more you know and I'm not like tracing out exactly how I'm going to chamfer these because it's going to be sanded so much so, so yeah you know definitely uh, everything looks better with the uh, chamfered edges so in the event that's our current step right there so now we have our our uh, edges chamfered As you can see it's it's got shape kind of now in in multiple directions not just over and from the side so now we're going to do a lot of sanding to try to round this out as best that we can all right and now we've done some sanding and uh, I know a lot of people like to put it in a vise and then just run the sander over it I probably will do that up oh, Landon's talking to y'all but uh, I've just been doing this number right here just kind of watching real carefully um, to try to keep things even you know in the front and in the back and uh, yeah starting starting to sort of take shape and look like something that's supposed to be a lure so you know the 
But what's going to be a challenge for me is to cut the slot for the bill um, accurately and uh, and affix the hardware. So that's that's where I might ruin this thing. So far, it's it's been relatively simple, time consuming, but simple. And uh, but I'm I'm enjoying seeing it come together. So fingers crossed that we don't uh, ruin this thing at some point in the process, though, because. Um, I really, really want this to turn out right. This wood stuff is pretty fun. I'm going to do more of this. Also, you know, because I bought all this stuff to do it, you know, I'm not going to invest in the paints and and uh, tools and all of that, the airbrush, just to do one, right? But uh, enjoying myself. Here's where we are. So, I've got the uh, little whip slot cut out. Which that's actually been the most difficult part because I'm sure I don't have the right tool. That was just done with the saw blade. Um, I just kind of drew it out, put it in the vise, gave it a little elbow grease with the saw, and then I've just kind of been filing the inside of it to uh, try to get it to fit this Lexan. So that's where we're going to pick up and uh, we're going to continue on. So we have our Lexan sheet here, courtesy of the Home Depot. And um, this is what a lot of people use. Uh, and I mean, obviously you can just buy the lips, but where's the fun in that? So this is our Lexan sheet. And uh, you can see we kind of get a fit. It won't seat all the way, but that's what files are for. All right, so we're back out in the fish cave and I measured basically um, with that ruler, it fits inside the slot. I measured from widest point to widest point um, inside uh, my little uh, slot there. And so that's what that is. And uh, I just kind of did a rough trace. Um, that's actually a little bit, the angles are a little bit too wide and they're not even as you can see. But I'm planning on filing this down quite a bit with my handy file and just kind of, you know, obviously these edges would be curved a little bit. So that's kind of the blank size that I want. I at least want it this wide right there at the body so that, you know, it'll fit right in there. And then of course we will kind of shape this um, as we go, but that is our blank, so to speak. So now I have to figure out a way to cut this out by hand. I'm gonna go the coping saw and uh, wish me luck. All right, so we've kind of gotten it started by sort of bracing it on the piece of wood that we cut out originally and it's real slow real slow going here it's like i don't want to uh ah we're out of focus i don't want to like get on it too hard and break this stuff so it's uh gonna gonna be a while but we can definitely do it so anyway that's uh that's where we're at so i will meet you guys back if i haven't cut my hand open hopefully with a lip that's been cut out because this is going to take a while and i'm not about to try and film all this okay we have a lip it's not a very pretty one but it is the beginning of a lip and i filed down uh, that in just a little bit just to help it seat a little bit better in there so as you can see it's very rough it's very uneven but we can change all of that with the file so we are essentially going to do a lot of this number right here till we have something that is evened out and a little bit more purdy so that is the next step Okay, so we have something that looks much better now. Oh, well, let's see if we can get it in focus. That is actually pretty even for uh, just kind of doing all this by hand my first time. So it, uh, it almost seats all the way in there. So I'll probably file down that edge a little bit more so that it seats all the way in. But I'm thinking that's pretty much um, it. And that's kind of what our square, square bill is going to look like. All right, wish me luck, everybody. This is going to be the hole 
for this little piece right there. I've already got it started. And I just have to get my angle right so that I don't drill through this thing. Just a little pre-drill in there so that we can now screw this in and I'll, uh, I'll probably put that in with some super glue and uh, we'll start adding the hardware just like that. All right, and now for the very scary part. I really, really don't want to mess this one up. So here we go. All right. Perfect. That one looks better than the other ones. Okay, so we are going to start this. Alrighty. Just gonna kinda get it started. Dab some of our uh, glue on there. Some of our Loctite gel. All right, welcome back. It is about a week and a half later, and the reason why it is so much later is because I've been waiting on my airbrush system that never came in the mail, so I had to get a refund through Amazon and just went and bought one locally. So I have already just kind of given this a uh, just a coat and um, super glue and went ahead and glued in the bill um, or, or the lip, whatever you want to call it. I'll probably still file it a little bit just to try to do a little bit of refining as I go. But um, let's give this bad boy a little bit of a tank test. Okay, welcome to my bathtub, because um, I know that you were all dying to see it. So, I have this little Spider-Man rod here, which was given to my son Landon when Landon was born by Happy Jack. So, I just figured, hey, this is a small enough rod that I can maneuver it around for a little bathtub test. So, uh, you can see the bait. Uh, floats floats very nicely and let's see what she does Ooh, actually wobbles like an old bait I'm excited you guys I can't believe it actually kind of works all right well I'm sold okay everybody so moment of truth we have our bait um, taped off of course so we have the the uh, lip and and uh and our hardware taped off so that we don't paint over that we have it set up on some helping hands here and uh here's a couple things you've never seen on this channel that's right we're gonna airbrush this thing and like a lot of baits i'm just gonna start with just a base white so we're just gonna give it um, just a base coat of solid white here to try to build a color off of i've done a little bit of practicing over the last couple days just doing some repaint on some old crankbaits that I had that maybe were missing eyeballs or the paint was chipped off. Just some stuff that needed touching up anyway and uh, figured I'd do a little practice. So here we go. Okay and here we go. So we're just gonna get a nice little base coat on. Using these airbrushes has uh, turned out to be quite a little fun hobby here so again the goal is to just get this thing nice even coat you know, I actually forgot to tape that little portion off so that's going to be a little bit white but I'm not worried about it alrighty here we go let's Let's see what we can get here. You can see we got a little, nice little gray fade going. I 
may have to do a couple different coats here, but that is more than fine. There again, I'm a total noob at this. I have no idea what I'm doing. But this is sort of, I want it to go from sort of light to gray. Then we're going to add a pearl effect on top of this gray, fade it into black with a shad kill dot, maybe some green towards the tail. And then we're going to affix it with some green jets and eyes. So that is the goal. All right, so we have our gray sides done right there. And uh, now I just want a little bit of pink right up there on the nose. Now, if I can get it in focus. And then some pink on the belly. So, here we go. Trying to keep this in focus while watching what I'm doing. Never painted a crankbait on camera before. All right, so now I'm just gonna add this uh, pearl effect here. This is sort of like an, this is sort of, uh, I think it's called like an aluminum pearl or something like that. And uh, it just creates a nice see-through sort of shimmer effect. So you can see there, it's a lot more shiny now. And we're just gonna coat the whole thing in it. It basically just pearls the whole thing. Let's see, this is what it is right there. Wicked aluminum. And I kind of found that you can spray that over an existing color and get a nice shimmery effect. So anyway, that's what we're doing right now. All right, so far here's what we have. I went back and touched up that green just a little bit more. Yeah. So now we want to run some black on the top, which is common. So here we go. Nice black layer here. And I actually want a little bit of overspray so that it will kind of fill in those edges there. But we're just going to do a little bit of fading on our own. Perfect. Just like that. Same with this side here. Yeah, just sort of fade in those edges. There you go. Maybe a little bit around where the eyes are going to go. Just Darken that up in general. Yeah. Okay, so we took the tape off and glued our jets and eyes on. So that can actually pass as a bait. So I think um, just a rookie mistake and something that I'll do better next time is give it a finer sanding before painting. You can still see that's pretty gritty so something that I would do just for aesthetic texture purposes is um, maybe do a little bit better job on that final sanding finish. But, um, you know, looking at it from afar, it's actually um, pretty cool. So not bad for, for a first time. I mean, this is the first wooden bait I've ever done from start to finish. You know, I, uh, I practiced a little bit of stenciling and things like that. You know, these are just old crankbaits that were in my uh, um, tackle box that were messed up or something. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get a little whack with it, I'm sure, as we get better and more familiar with the brush. And I'm still learning how the paints react and, you know, which ones paint better, which ones need more producer, etc. So, I'm pretty stoked, you guys. The objective of this video is just to get a working functional bait the very first time and to kind of show you that hey you don't have to have a shop full of band saws and and um you know drill presses and belt sanders and all all of this money and space um to to start doing wooden baits 
you know, you can do it minimal, minimalistically. Is that a word? I don't know. Basically, the, the point was, you know, I'm going to basically build this bait on my kitchen table with a few uh, hand tools using minimal investment and see if, see if I can get something decent. And, uh, and we did it. So, you know, obviously some people are set up for wood. I am not. But don't be discouraged if you don't have all those things. You don't necessarily have to have them to enter this hobby. You know, it's like I tell people, you don't need 20 gallons of plastic, you know, 30 different uh, pigments and 20 different molds in order to start making soft plastics. You can get um, great baits with very minimal investment and, uh, and minimal shop space. So anyway, we're going to keep coating this and uh, we'll meet you back whenever she's done. This is quick epoxy, so I got to work fast. All right, everyone. So I'm down at the lake. So I, I'm out here in my, uh, in my old stomping grounds, my parents' neighborhood. And uh, I have the crankbait with me here and I was going to do some uh, filming with it try to get a fish catch for you guys but as you can see in the back there there's a wedding going on which is like right where I need to be so I'm probably not gonna be able to fish much with the crankbait today here uh, certainly won't be able to even get close to them because I don't want to be all up in their wedding that they paid all this money for so I might make a few casts right here um, but if it doesn't happen here I'll have to take this thing uh, somewhere else all right, we're just gonna make it through a few throws with it and see what we can do. Well, so we've made a few casts around here so far. Uh, haven't had a bite yet. I've been seeing lots of bluegill moving around. I haven't seen any bass or any um, any hits or anything like that. Big Bird's on his way down here, so we're gonna hit this lake up with some kayaks. I don't do much kayak fishing, but it'll at least get me out there a little bit. We're gonna try to take you guys along. But uh, I have to say, I'm super happy with the way this came out. It, uh, it kind of has that hunting action to it as it's wobbling, which they say you kind of want. You know, I would I would like to get good enough at this to where I can make one with uh, good enough tolerances that it'll run straight. I think that's kind of the goal as a bait maker is, is to get something uh, precise like that. But, you know, for not knowing really my angles or really how to measure things, super happy with it. Um, and that was kind of the point of the video was to just see how approachable it was without a shop full of uh, you know expensive power tools. And uh, I have to say, this has been a super fun experience, but we're gonna keep fishing. We'll hopefully get that catch on film. And uh, I'm just thrilled that this thing works, you guys. All right, so we just got out of the kayaks, and uh, how many fish we catch? Um, zero, zero. Zero. So, none on the crankbait, obviously. We threw core shot stick worms around on wacky rigs, Nico rigs. He threw some other crankbaits to see if maybe 
he could catch one versus me catching one on my crankbait. So okay. the, the store-bought crankbaits didn't work. Handmade crankbaits didn't work. So I can't just blame it on my crankbait. If nothing worked, we blame it on twenty twenty. Then, then that means it's not just my bait. Yeah, I, I do blame the year of twenty twenty, and and just how backwards this year is. You know, it, last year I would have caught a fish on that crankbait. It's also what one hundred and four degrees outside. Yeah, once the water temperature is back below the nineties, you'll stand a little bit better chance. But you know, this lake, uh, I, I grew up out here in this neighborhood. I've caught a lot of crankbait fish. This lake, I caught two bass on the same crankbait. So it it can be really good because it's super shallow and it's always been good for a shallow crankbait. So that's that's kind of why we came here. And uh, Big Bird just got his new yak. So it's pretty cool. He's rocking the AI sticker, of course. World's worst fit. We need to get you some dead on stuff. Yeah, I need some dead on. Yeah, because he comes out and makes baits at the shop every now and then. You'll be, you'll, you'll be, be out at my tomorrow. house tomorrow? I'll be there tomorrow. Might get some footage tomorrow of him running some running some baits so triple injector yeah you want to try the trip injector I need to trip trip injector it'll change your world so anyway guys thank you all for watching uh sorry we didn't get one but i'm super happy with it being my first wooden bait all right we'll catch you next time